Today we have a very special guest, Ismael Marquez, and he helps personal brands and businesses grow on social media. But before I get into his what he does now, I really want to hear, just give a brief overview, Ismail, if you can, of what you do now, and we'll kind of get into your origin story. Okay, sweet. So in a nutshell, I just, uh, like you said, I help businesses and personal brands get on social media and, uh, you know, just help them navigate them through their social media journey, because for a lot of people, if they're not active, uh, it's very difficult for them, or it's overwhelming. So it's really just pointing them in the right, right direction. And then on top of that, if they need help with like actual editing, that's where I can help as well. Gotcha. I didn't know you did all of that too. I thought it was mainly like a lot of the editing help and like, I didn't know you was a lot of guidance as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, not every client yeah. needs guidance. Yeah. So it's just something I, I can offer, but a lot of them just need editing. Like every client I work with is a little different. Uh, not every like client I have is the same exact thing, like ABC for each one. You know? Oh, interesting, yeah. interesting. So was this the first entrepreneurial thing you did? Like the content and stuff or what was the first thing? No, the first thing I did, um, so I played, I grew up playing soccer uh and that was like my bread and butter like my whole childhood the most i did as a kid was like buy and resell candy uh i would get candy i have a lot of family in mexico and they own like a candy shop i'd buy it from them because it was much cheaper over there and they would mm -hmm. come back to school and sell it for more that was the most i did in school or like high school middle school but uh apart from that uh i really started to try things was 2018. i tried i don't even want to say try but uh, I tried drop shipping in 2018 and uh, I had no money to my name at that time. And I quickly realized you need ad spend for that. So mm -hmm. I didn't really, I don't know if you want to say it tried, but I got started and then mm -hmm. didn't do that. Um, my buddies flipped cars. I was always around when I moved to Arizona because I'm from California originally. Mm -hmm. And I moved to Arizona in 2018. All of those new friends are really entrepreneurial, whether it's like day trading, flipping, flipping anything, cars, houses. So that's what really got me intrigued or like motivated me to like do something because I saw them doing something. Uh, so I had my friends teach me how to like flip cars and stuff like that. Um, but those are like the most things I ever like tried to do, but it was nothing I ever stayed consistent with, which is something I struggled with in 2018 and 2019 was like choosing an industry and sticking with it. I would like try something and if it didn't work out right away, I would like, just let, let it go. Gotcha. So when you said try drop shipping, what, why did you say, like, I don't know if you said try it. Like, was it not long or? No, it was probably so like I made a store. Uh, I tried selling like iPhone cases and I made a store and everything. And then, like I said, I didn't have any money to my name and just like everything in general was new to me. So I didn't realize you needed like money to spend on ads. I had like $500 to my name. So I was like, okay, this isn't going to work out. I remember I paid like a meme page to like promote the website and it did like 10 sales or something like that but nothing crazy and i was like okay wow well like i'm gonna need a lot more money if i need you know more traffic to my page so right. yeah okay. that's why i said try it it was like literally a probably a one month thing and that was gotcha. it so what was the first i guess like semi-successful successful thing you started as entrepreneurial i say it's what i'm doing now okay, and okay. i would say it's because it's the first thing i truly stuck with so i started doing i've always been into content um my dad is actually what got me into content in general. My dad would always take pictures of my brother and I playing soccer. Mm -hmm. And it was something my brother and I always looked forward to was like after the game, my dad would show us the pictures. Oh. So that's what got me into content. And then I would like bought a camera, did that for fun, always as a hobby, like took pictures with friends of other people, you know, just, just for fun. It was always a hobby. And then it wasn't until like 2019, 2020, where I was like, I should try and do something with this. And then, um, it came through with editing and Ryan was like my first uh, like big breakthrough actually. Right. Um, so where he like posted, I was following him on Instagram when he had like under 100K, under like 60K, I wanna say under 50K. He posted he was looking for an editor. And at that time I had like edited projects for fun and or uh, like friends would pay me to do stuff, but it was never something I was like, let me go find business or clients or anything like that. It was just for fun and if money came my way, it came my way. And then I saw Ryan post that he needed an editor and I reached out and that's where that began. Gotcha. Yeah. Now we'll get into more of that stuff yeah. like what you do now, but I'm, I'm definitely curious, like, cause when I, when I was starting, I guess, entrepreneurial stuff, I was like yeah. doing a lot of personal training, mm -hmm. realtor stuff. Like I was doing a bunch of different things. Yeah. And I also had the problem of starting something. I would stick to it cause I would go all in real yeah. hard, but then I'd find out I just don't like this. And I yeah. just move on to the next one. And it's like, yeah. I don't like this and move on to the next one. 
Now, what caused you, do you think, to stay with the content? Like, I'm sure you didn't like every aspect of it. Why did you stick with it? Um, I think it was because I liked it. It's kind of like what you were saying is that like, uh, well, first of all, with content, it's like it's service based. So there isn't real depending on like what kind of content you're doing. Uh, it's It could be literally zero dollars to get started or, you know, under 100 bucks pay like for Premiere Pro a monthly subscription or something or whatever it is. It's very low barrier to entry. So that was something that was cool. And I already had uh, the camera and stuff like that. Uh, and like I said, content was something I always liked. So whenever stuff did come my way, I enjoyed it. It was like you were saying, it's it's like a passion. Uh, and then when I had a breakthrough, it was just like going on from there. But uh, versus like the other stuff, it was because I, I was motivated by the money, not so much because like I really liked it. It was just really me like trying something because I'm like, okay, I see this person can do it with and make a lot of money. I'm going to give it a shot too. But uh, yeah, I would say that's the biggest thing is because I liked content versus the other stuff. Okay, that makes sense. Because there's always a trade-off where I hear different gurus, different influencers saying, hey, find what you love versus no, just stick to something. And as you get good at it, you'll love it. So there's yeah. two like yeah. on mm -hmm. like completely conflicting ideas. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting to hear you say that you actually liked the content. That's why yeah. you stuck with it. Now, you mentioned Ryan. And the, for the people listening, he's talking about Ryan Pineda. Yeah. Um, he does a lot of the editing and the content stuff for him. Now, what caused... What allowed you to work from? Because you said you reached out, yeah. but I'm sure a bunch of people reached out. So what made you stand out? How do you stand out like for people listening yeah. to someone like that? I leveraged relationships. Um, so I got into social media in 2018 uh, because of Ricky Gutierrez. Uh, he's my cousin, and he's a day trading influencer. He brought me on to do sales, and it's funny. I had no sales experience. He like just took a bet on me and was like, hey, do you want to move to Arizona? And like, you know... Uh, help me with sales or whatever and I was like yeah cool so that's how I got into like social media as a whole and then um, I always knew I liked content that position of sales I knew long term and he knew it too we've had the, that discussion in the past where it's like that role wasn't meant to be forever type of thing mm -hmm. um, and I like wanted to start doing my own thing I always had like that drive but just didn't know where to start and then I watched Gary Vee a lot and I remember he'd always say things like if you're like if you have no business or whatever and you're not sending out 10 emails a day or 10 cold DMs a day, like, are you really trying hard enough? So I took that approach for like two to three months and every day as like part of my to-do list, uh, when I would get to the office that I had at Ricky's place, it was five to 10 either DMs or cold emails I would send out a day. And part of what I like to target was people who weren't like, I don't know what the right word to say is like, maybe they're not influencers yet, but you can see that they're posting consistently and want to be an influencer. Uh, so I had followed Ryan and I would actually put post notifications on or story notifications on for a lot of influencers mm. just in case they ever did post like I'm hiring. Wow. And it was just coincidence. Ryan posted like literally within one minute I was in his email. Like he posted, hey, I'm looking for an editor. Email them right away. And then I, I told him, I was like, hey, I work for Ricky doing this, this and this. And that's what I think was the biggest yeah. like separator was just leveraging that relationship. He knew I had worked for an influencer I believe Ricky had close to a million subs on YouTube at the time. So from my point of view, I think he probably saw that and yeah. was like, okay, he's working for an already established influencer. I, I can probably trust him. Yeah. No, that's huge. Like yeah. Relationships and status mean a lot. They do. And in, in yeah. getting what you want. So like, for example, this podcast, um, as I'm reaching out to these different guests, some of them are, they're, they're very busy. You know, yeah. Very busy people, very successful people. So before reaching out to them, I'm thinking, who do I know that knows them? Yeah. And then I'm reaching out to that person. I'm like, hey, like, I'd love to have this person on. Like, mm -hmm. you know, And hopefully, if I've done life right, I've brought enough value to that person and just been nice and yeah. like, gifts, whatever. By the time I've asked, they're like, yeah, like, of course. Like, yeah. let, me, let me connect you with this person. Exactly. And it's worked. Yeah. Like, no, 100% relationships. And I realized that that's when it really clicked for me was when I was like, I didn't really have like a big portfolio or anything. Like when I reached out to Ryan. I, I obviously included things I had edited in the past, but I felt like it was the relationship. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I used both of those relationships to go get more business. Yeah. And that's literally, as of today, I've not paid like any money on like marketing or anything to get clients. It's all been word of mouth or just when I have conversations, yeah. like if like I was at the real estate event that Ryan had and, you know, they're always going to ask, what do you do? And then, hey, yep. this is what I do and this is who I do it for. And right away, it's just like a proof of concept. You work for all these influencers, you're you're probably, you know, trustworthy. 100%. Yeah. I'm kind of curious, how successful was it doing the cold DMs? You said you're like emailing. No, it's, it's like, it's not, 
it's definitely like if you have no budget or anything like that i'd recommend doing it because it's free yeah. but it, i would if i had to guess like for every 10 emails one maybe i don't know probably less than 10 percent response rate a lot of it has to do with like the size of the influencers yeah i would try and target like i said smaller influencers because i felt like i had more of a chance of getting a reply yeah um versus like you know messaging someone with a million followers it's not that they won't reply there's right. a chance they will but i would guess that the chances aren't as likely what was the initial message like? I'm curious, because this is something I'm starting to do. I don't know if my team's already DM'd you. I'm sure they have. <laughs> I'm not sure. It, maybe, but yeah. like we're doing like cold outreach marketing mm-hmm. for the DMs and yeah. Instagram and stuff like that for coaching, yeah. uh, real estate coaching. And I'm kind of curious, what was your process like? It's so like straight to the point. I feel okay. like sometimes people want it to be super professional. And I don't know if there's anything or not that there's anything wrong with that. But the way I think of it, if I'm a super busy guy, like someone like Ryan, if someone's reaching out to me because they want something or they want something from me, just tell me what it is right away. So it would be literally to the point. I would put like the subject as like free marketing or like organic. The, the headline would be trying to be catchy or the subject. And then the actual email would be like, hey, my name's Israel Marquez. I edit for X, Y, and Z. Let me know if you need like help with editing whatever they have. Mm. So like, for example, if it's a podcast, I would say, hey, I edit podcast clips for X, Y, Z. If you need podcast clips edited just like this, let me know. It was like literally three sentences is, gotcha. is all I would do. And then I would attach like pictures of who I'm working with and also work I've done for them. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So I'm kind of curious, how did you even get started with uh, working with Ricky? Because R- Ricky's a pretty big name. Ricky yeah, Gutierrez. Yeah, my cousin. So that's, oh, that's how literally like, yeah, nice. he's just like, he knew I had always wanted to move out of California because he was in Arizona before. He's originally from California as well. Yeah. And uh, he was growing like his social media and all that. And then he like asked me one day, he was like, hey, if you ever want to work with, like for me in Arizona, let me know. And I took him on that. I was like, yeah, I'm down. Oh, that's so, awesome, dude. Yeah. Well, what is your like, I guess, what is your your team, your your system? Like, what does it all look like? Like your content, like what do you offer? What is it? I'm kind of, I'm very curious now like, yeah. how you operate it. I typically it's just I like to do it's mainly short form so I think I should probably clear that up I don't like to do long form I've done long form and stuff but it's not what I like I very much so enjoy the short form and it's also obviously more of like a thing now Um, and in my opinion I think it's like if you're going to get started on social media I would recommend people to start on short form and it's not that you should ignore long form because the power of long form views is way more than like a short form view like a a thousand views on tiktok versus a thousand views on youtube have a like much different meaning um people like i was talking with justin he's on a ryan pineda's social media team we were talking about it earlier today where he was like people go on tiktok just to say they have a hundred thousand followers but it's like more impressive to say you have a thousand on youtube because it's like getting people to subscribe on youtube is much more difficult than for them to follow on like a short form content platform um but uh yeah right now it's it's me and i have two u.s guys and we also do use vas uh it is harder to use vas because people ask me if it's good to use vas and it's it's harder but it's a lot more managing i would say you know there's been plenty of times where i've sent videos to vas and it does you know multiple revisions uh part of what i've been like doing is just if i do find someone that's a va i try and train them up before i ever have them do any client work I would never deliver something that I wouldn't deliver myself. And mm-hmm. it's just quality control. I prefer to use people um, who like have much more experience editing and I don't care what country they're from or what the price is, as long as it makes sense, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, right now it's, it's, I'd say we're still a small team, but I just want to grow that part of that is like creating content. Yeah. I love that. And yeah, dude, the, for editing specifically, I know this cause I, um, I've hired different editors. Yeah. The experience matters so much. Yeah. Like, uh, when I make job posts for VAs to do mm-hmm. short form or long form kind of edits, and I always do like test, test, yeah, like of course. skills assessments. And I'm like, because everyone has their nicest resumes and yeah, nice whatever. Everyone always does. And I'm like, hey, can you just like, would you be willing to do a quick skills assessment? Like, just edit a clip out of this. Yeah. Like, your best clip. <laughs> exactly. No, 100%. And, and it's so clear to see, like, wow, this guy's good. Yeah. Versus, uh, like, yeah, no. Yeah. No, so. 100%. Um, there's plenty of people. And that's actually something I feel like is has been like, an issue in the industry, if you want to call it. I've talked with other short form editors that like, for example, Ryan Pineda, I've seen ads of people like, uh, get videos like Ryan or I edit yes. Ryan's videos when they don't. 
I've talked with oh, people like wow. uh, Ryan McGinn or Magin. I'm not sure if I'm yeah. saying that correctly. And he said it too, where people will be like, they're steal. I don't know, stealing. I guess is the right word. Like his work and saying they've worked with influencers when they never have. I've gone on like job posting sites and I see like, oh, I've edited for X Y Z, and I'm like, I know the person who edits for that. Like, right. so I think that's a that's probably an issue in the Ooh, industry. That is an but, issue. Uh, I mean, what can you do? Yeah. I try and take it as a compliment if people are like, yeah, I edit for Ryan. I'm like, oh, I know it's not. But. <laughs> You're like, I know all the editors. Yeah, yeah. Man. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, that is something, because you can't control it. It's just yeah. people will just say it and do it. Mm-hmm. It is a compliment. Um, I guess, what does it look like for you next steps then? Because you have it, you know, you have a couple US guys, a couple VAs helping mm-hmm. you operate the, 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 the stuff for the content. Is the plan to scale larger on it? Is the plan to shift to do something else? Like, where's your head at for this upcoming year? Um, I want to scale it, um, but I also just want to build a personal brand. Like, I've always been yeah. behind the scenes helping influencers create their personal brand. I was going to say that. So yeah. now I'm like, okay, well, now I, I want to do that side of it um, and help other people that way. Um, just not be behind the scenes as much. I, I enjoy it. Obviously, I've been doing it for four or five years now, but like... Uh, uh, I would say in general, at, that would be my plan. I still want to scale it, um, but I also want to start on my personal brand. So if I have to take on less work to work on my personal brand, I will. Um, just because, like I said, quality control. Like if I had 10 people tell me today they needed editing tomorrow, I would have to turn people away because mm-hmm. I wouldn't be able to provide that same experience I do for Ryan and yeah. others. Yeah, no, I, I think that's a good choice, man. Because yeah. uh, for the people listening, uh, Ismail, you're like, that's all that was my first thought i was like you're the guy behind the scenes of everyone yeah like, yeah behind ryan Pineda, ricky gutierrez you mentioned like even austin rutherford and like yeah. other names there's a lot of big names yeah it's like there has to be a something that you were wanting to do something for yourself yeah um yeah. so i'm happy that you're making the shift like what's what's your plan then is it what kind of content are you wanting to make i, I wanted i would say just in general just social media con like about social media um like how to grow i would say yeah how to grow and just like helping people make that push or jump that I am trying to do right now. I'm going to do right now is like getting on social media because of like, I know I've known the power of it. I've just always been behind the scenes. So now I want to be on the other side of that. And I just want people to realize like that, how powerful it is, you know, and like how dramatically or how drastically, sorry, your business can like explode if, if you're doing that or, you know, if you don't have a business, but you're doing social media for fun, you can then turn that into a business, whether it's, you know, just with brand deals or affiliates, or, you know, if, if you're doing it for fun and something can come out of it. Yeah. So is it going to be like you creating your own short form content or is it going to be like a podcast or a YouTube? Or... Um, I'm going to do similar style podcast stuff. I don't know if I'll have it like for YouTube. I mean, I guess I probably should if I'm going to like have a setup similar to this, but it'll mainly be so I can make more short form clips. Uh, But I'll do like content, just talking heads about social media, social media tips and stuff like that. And then just on like the monetizing side of it, because I've been a part of that with like Ricky mainly like seeing and with Ryan as well, seeing like how how to monetize. I've just been around a lot of uh, creators and influencers who monetize through social media. So uh, I've been always like behind the scenes about like a part of that. So I just want to now do that for myself and for others. Yeah, help I, people. I think it's that. fascinating actually because a lot of I've noticed that in social media specifically, you see a lot of people who are either really good at getting the eyeballs and the views, and really people who are just good at monetizing it. Yeah, yeah. it's it's hard to find, or it's more rare to find the people who can do both. Yeah, uh, which is like the people you're editing for, but it takes time. Yeah, for sure. Because um, it's funny, like so far I've been pretty decent at monetizing stuff. I'm mm-hmm. I'm working on the getting the more eyeballs and the yeah. growing. Um, but then I have these friends who are just crazy good at just getting eyeballs with like yeah. either funny stuff and super entertaining content that just mm-hmm. blows up. Yeah. And it, it's like, we're, we now bounce ideas back and forth. You're like, yeah. how do you make money on this? And I'm like, how do you get the views? Yeah, no, hundred percent. I think something to notice or note, um, is views are great. Like I, I'd be lying to you if I said, oh, you got a million views. It's bad. Obviously yeah. it's not bad, but if the majority of your content, is it, depending on if you're selling something or you want to sell something, if it's not valuable, you can get a million views on every video. And if it's not related to your content, you won't convert. There's Mm -hmm. people I know of that like have hundreds of thousands of followers and they can't monetize. Mm -hmm. And it's because of the way the audience was built up, you know, like I'll give you a super random example. If you're 
I don't know, a comedian and you try and sell a real estate course. Like there's no correlation. Mm -hmm. Like maybe the comedian has been doing real estate for 10 years and is successful, but he's known for comedy. It's Mm -hmm. like, you can't, it'll be almost impossible to monetize that. Um, So it's not always about the views. Like you can make, there's people I know who make videos every day and they might not be getting a million views every video. They might only be getting a thousand views on TikTok every day, but it's so valuable that when the time came for them to monetize, like people are going to buy, you know, you don't always have to have the most followers to monetize. You don't have to get a million views every video to monetize. There's some of the influencers I work with now. I'll just speak about Ryan. Like we were talking about how his TikTok views have not been the best recently, but you know, they're still crushing it. Does it matter? They're yeah. still crushing it, monetizing, and it's because Ryan has built such a loyal following, a strong following, and throughout all of his businesses, he delivers. Yeah. So it's that experience and it's that value he provides that you don't always have to rely on getting 100K views per video or whatever it is. Yes. If you're always providing value and you're consistent, you're always showing up, people will you know, like you. Yeah, and dude, I can attest to that too. Like, um, so I don't have that big of an audience. It's a pretty small audience, but it for me it feels very loyal. Yeah, because like, a lot of them come from YouTube too. Yeah, um, and the times where every time I pitch something like, "Hey, I'm looking to raise money. I need 100k for this deal. Who wants to invest?" Mm-hmm. Just a bunch of DMs. Hey, yeah. I want la- my last post uh, job posting on Instagram. I post for interns. Mm-hmm. I need an interns to help me make offers on on these houses. Yeah, you got like 50 applicants right away. I filtered through all of them. I was like, let me just hire. I heard 22. So now 22 people free for commission or making yeah. offers. You see, and you see, that that's like literally a perfect example. So yeah. you said you don't have the most followers mm-hmm. and 22 interns, that's that's, that's really good. Yeah. And then know? all of them I asked, I'm like, why why are you wanting to work with me? Out of all people, like why? Mm-hmm. And I'll, kind of free, it's commission based. Yeah. Um, they're like, well, you've helped me for like over a year. I was like, how? Like YouTube. I was like, yeah. oh. Exactly. <laughs> like, you, know, it's, yeah. you don't know who you're helping until you actually connect with these people. Yeah. Uh, and so I, yeah, I could definitely attest to, it's not about the followers at all. And I thought that way mm-hmm. at first, I don't, yeah. I don't know why. I, I think it's that, a social proof thing yeah. where people want to perceive it that way. Like, oh, you don't have 10 K like you're probably not. It's like, well, they don't know where you're at in your journey. Like mm-hmm. what if you just started the last, they don't know that. I mean, they can scroll down and figure that out, but you know, it, it doesn't matter. Like mm-hmm. if you're providing value long enough for your audience, they will trust you. Yes. You know, it's like, you don't physically know them but they feel like it because yeah. you've been helping them out so much 100 percent, 100 percent, and and the audience matters a ton it's like i like your the analogy you made and i thought of another one it's like because for me and my content it's all a lot of it's real estate yeah investing and stuff teaching that stuff and so it's like if and most audience is like male mm-hmm. uh so if i sold i was like look i'm gonna sell a makeup product but yeah it would not work it would not work <laughs> yeah it's, it's so like different. if you're not talking about what you want to sell or provide it won't work um you know, I tell a lot of the people I work with because, like, a lot of content has been, like, recycled. Like, top three things this, top three things that type of stuff. And they want something different. And they're like, can I talk about other stuff? And I always tell them, it's not bad to talk about other stuff. In fact, I think you should. Mm-hmm. I just think the majority of your content should be what you're trying to sell or provide. So, for your example, if you're doing real estate, but you also have interesting stories to talk about, I think you should talk about those interesting stories. I would call it like an 80-20 split, 70-30. Like 70 to 80% should be real estate and then the other should be cold traffic content. Like if you had a crazy Europe trip, like yeah, make a TikTok or reel about that. That can blow up and then that can funnel down to your other videos. Uh, Because some of these platforms, like when they get onto your video for the first time and you like it, they'll throw you another one. But if it's not about what you want to sell or provide, Like they're not going to know what your brand is about. Mm -hmm. So if they find you through like the example, a Europe video you made, and then they see that the rest of your content's real estate, they'll know, okay, Justin is real estate. And that's what they need to perceive because if and when you do sell a product, they need to know that that's your bread and butter. Yeah, exactly. And there's there's so much that like, it's it's all marketing. And when I I first heard of marketing, I actually, it took me a long time to really understand Mm -hmm. Um, I was like, oh, I just thought just get the eyeballs. It's like, yeah. you know, get the right type of exactly. person yeah. to sell what you want to sell. Mm-hmm. So, okay, that's cool, man. Have you ever thought about start? You said you thought about starting a podcast too? Yeah, well, I'm going to make one of my rooms at my house right now. I'm going to make it into a studio. Um, I'm going to have like a similar setup, like podcast style. Um, I think I am just going to make it a podcast. The, the whole purpose of it is to make short form because that's my bread and butter. But if I'm going to be filming with them already, I think I might just as well post it on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Um, I just 
I haven't thought of a name or anything, but that doesn't matter. I'll figure it out once I get started. But I already have all the equipment at the house. So yeah. I'm just waiting for the space to open up and I'm going to get going. Yeah, dude, if I could encourage you to do one thing, it's it's like... I know you don't like editing long form, yeah. but it's the long form stuff. Yeah, no, 100%. It's it's like we were talking about, like, a 1,000 views on TikTok versus 1,000 views on YouTube. Those YouTube people are so much more valuable than any other platform. Yeah, because if you think about it, um, I get messages all the time. Actually, my inbox is always full on Instagram, so it's so hard to even respond. Mm -hmm. But um, I get messages all the time about, like, dude, I just binged all your content on YouTube. Like, thank yeah. you so much. And I was like... That's a lot of hours. It is, <laughs> yeah. Know? Anyone can watch your 30 second video, yeah. but for someone to watch a 10 minute video, yeah. 30 minute video or like podcast 45 minutes, it mm -hmm. shows a lot. You know? Yeah. They'll start to know you as a person. And that's yeah. why, like, I don't know, man, for, and I'm, I'm excited for you to start doing your own personal branding because it's changed my life Yeah, for sure. Like in a short, it's been doing it for about two years now. Mm -hmm. And, and just like relationships, income, things that come nicely that you yeah. see now. Um, so yeah, I'm pumped for you. And the biggest impact for me was definitely YouTube and now the podcast. Like, yeah. I don't know if you've thought about it, but, um, so for podcasting, I did it. I started this mainly for the purpose of creating short form clips to blow up better Yeah. because I was, I'm going to be collaborators on everyone's feeds yeah. and, and it'll show up on my profile, on yep. their profile and like, and so on. Yeah. And they've been happy. People have been happy. Like, dude, I'm getting followers and I'm like, me too. Yeah, <laughs> so exactly. It's been good. But what I didn't foresee was the conversations I was having with people after the podcast. Because oh, okay. I'm having guests that are have some type of value in some way, shape, or form, whether mm -hmm. they're successful with money or something else. There's usually a skill set behind that. And yeah. usually after the podcast, I always just have conversation, just you know, briefly. And um, I try to help them. They try to help me. And I've gotten so much value from those. And yeah. it's just a relationship. Um, so, like, if, if you've definitely, if you've thought about it. Yeah. I would definitely push you to. Yeah, for sure. I think I can see the relationships like, you know, starting one or growing one uh, with the people you bring on. And I know it, it wouldn't be an issue for me to like to bring people on because a lot of them like I, I work for. So, yeah, I mean, I have no reason not to. Yeah, it, it's been it's been really good, man. I'll, yeah. I'll just say that. And then YouTube's been good. Um, the short form. Yeah, I, I I'm trying to my biggest focus is really just having all these podcasts so yeah. that I can have all the short form easily without mm -hmm. having to like, cause I used to sit down for a long time, like yeah. hours at a time, like doing short form and yeah. TikTok, TikTok, TikTok. This is an easy way for sure as well. Like, you know, in general, it's a good idea, but if, if you're someone listening that doesn't have a lot of time um, or are afraid to be on camera, like this is a actual conversation. So you just put a camera in front of you and then you can cut this up into clips. So it's a good way also if you're afraid of being on camera, getting started, you know, it just feels way more natural than it does. Like if you're looking directly at the yeah. camera, I'm kind of curious, what are your biggest insights or tips because you've been around this space for so long for mm -hmm. someone trying to grow fastest on social media? Like what are your, like the biggest overarching tips? The fastest? Yeah. I'm really curious. I mean, the fastest. And if you want to get hate too, is saying wild stuff, honestly, yeah. but, um, it goes back to what we were saying is that like, you can say the wildest stuff, but what is your end goal? If you're going to sell something, if you say crazy things every time about different topics, yeah, you might grow a following, but is it is that following worth anything to you if you're not getting the right eyeballs? Um, I think it's, at least in the, in the space that I typically am working with, which is like info-based influencers, typically you don't grow overnight or like right away. Mm -hmm. It's rare, like even Ryan growing as fast as he did, you know, that's not common. Right. And I think people need to realize that as well because I've worked with many people with social media. I work with them for a month and they're like, I'm not an influencer yet. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, it, it could take you six months. It could take you a year. Right. It could take longer. Right. I, there is no like, I wouldn't say there's a blueprint to where like if you post every day for 30 days, you will have over 10K. You know, mm. that would be great right. if that happened. But, you know, social media is a long game. And yeah. if you're consistent, it will work out. So as far as like a, a tip to grow fast, I don't know if, if there, that's even an actual tip, but like I would say the biggest thing is just consistency. All the creators I work with and influencers I work with, they are successful on social media because they show up every day. And it might not be showing up in real life. Maybe they, they batch created on Monday mm -hmm. and they have content for a month. To you, they showed up every single day. Mm -hmm. And the more times you show up on someone's feed, you know, like the more likely they will convert if they like you. So I would say 
I don't know if that, yeah, I wouldn't say it's like a, the fastest way to grow, but I would say it's, if you commit to it long enough, it's a guaranteed way yeah. to succeed on social media. Uh, so yeah, I, I, that would be my biggest tip. If you're getting started, just don't pay attention to the numbers. Yeah. I mean, I know it's hard not to. Like when I first started editing for Ryan, I was like that. Like, oh no, the TikTok didn't perform. Mm-hmm. The TikTok, TikTok didn't perform. But I tried straying away from like even looking at the numbers and just realizing that the impact the videos are actually having uh, is like far more valuable than the actual like views because views are nice but it just goes all back down to how valuable are those views it that's a great tip too because even if not everything hits mm-hmm. some might yeah some might yeah <laughs> you know, exactly it's, it's always a might um and it's funny that you said to grow fastest like truly is probably just say a lot of like things that people would hate yeah because some of my best performing videos were definitely those yeah it was the controversial topics like one of my most is it the rent one there's, no, there's one that, one that we did for Wealthy Investor oh, with you. Oh, that one did do good on TikTok. Yeah. yeah, there was two that I remember from you. One was how to make 50K before Christmas. Yeah. Numbers always do Numbers good. Numbers do well, yeah. Um, and then the other one was, like, I think it was your tenant criteria. Oh, yeah. And I know I know it's <laughs> different per state, which is actually good for in the ter- terms of video because mm-hmm. you might have said something that in another state is illegal right. and that, you know, it <laughs> triggers people. Yeah. So, no, I remember that. That one was funny because it was, like, uh, it was talking about like one of my screening processes was like the I looked at the background and I don't want any past evictions, no background yeah. uh, criminal activity. Yeah. And people were like, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, yeah. People were like, oh, people deserve second chances. Yeah. And, you know, it's just stuff like that. Yeah. And that that is something where like you, you truly meant what you said yeah. and it is valuable. It is something you do in real life. That is your criteria. But to other people, they take offense to that. Yeah. You know, like, oh, wow, that's so inhumane or whatever they want to believe. But you have every right to do that. So, yeah. So there's a time when I was testing a lot. And yeah. I was, I'm always testing on yeah. like social media and stuff. And I was testing controversial topics. Mm-hmm. One of my best videos wasn't those, but it was like a 75 hard challenge video. Mm-hmm. Have you heard of that one? Yeah, yeah. So 75 hard, it's, it's a challenge where you do, do all these crazy things for 75 days. It's a really hard challenge. It tests your, really your mental strength mm-hmm. of like how much you can stick to it. And what I said was like, I hate the 75 part challenge. Yeah. I actually do like it, but I hated some aspects of it. Yeah. And so yeah. I, just, I just started out with that. And then it was like one of the best performing videos I've ever had. And I, I reposted it multiple times. Yeah. Um, and that's good that you repost it. Yeah. People don't, people <laughs> don't like to repost stuff and you definitely should. Yeah. We've done that plenty of times with all the people I've worked with. Like I wouldn't say post it again right away but give it a everyone has their own criteria i would say at least like six weeks six weeks to eight weeks and then post it again and then it could blow up again yeah so it definitely made me think too um even though that video was not related to my niche yeah of real estate yeah i i didn't have a way to track uh like how many of these because i got a bunch of followers from yeah like how many of these actually converted to money like i don't know yeah that's something it's always going to be hard to track where it's like yeah your video blew up you got a lot of followers you'll I mean, there's no way to know yeah, for sure. Uh, I would just, yeah, there's like no answer for that. I would just say it's like, it, it's good to get those views. And if you got followers from great, now it's about retaining those followers and providing value to them. Yeah. And some of those people, like I said, it's like, maybe they are into real estate, but they've never came across your real estate stuff. They found you through that 70 hard, 75 yeah. hard challenge video. And then they went on their profile and they're like, oh, okay, he hates 75 hard. But he is a real estate investor, and that's what I want to get into. Right. I'm going to follow him. Right. Now, I'm curious. Now, where does the future look like in terms of what you're using for your content with AI? Because uh, I've started to use AI. I'm kind of curious. Where are you where are you looking to do with it, if anything? The only way I've used AI so far in content is, like, uh, for scripts okay. uh, and YouTube, YouTube titles and stuff like that. Uh, I haven't used it, like, in terms of editing or anything like that. But, yeah, AI is kind of it's kind of a trip, like, yeah. how – how it's all going to play out who knows but so you use it for scripts of like what to say in the videos yeah yeah and like i'll Whoa. like think of like a script myself i'll throw it into chat gpt and be like give me variations of this and you can put things like make it more aggressive or make it more oh. insulting and then you know <laughs> try, try and do stuff like that and then just cherry pick what words um like you think would perform best has and that it, been helpful to you like seeing i guess i, I was yeah because like it opens like my way wow. of thinking i would say like you know like people would be like my top three things to start flipping houses like right. i'm sure a lot of people have done that mm-hmm. 
I, you need to be different than that. You need to think of like a more creative way. So I would put that in there and put like, give me different ways of saying this. And they'll give you different ways. Right. Um, so it'll be like, oh, wow. Like I would have never thought of it that way. Yeah. So it, it's cool in that aspect. That's funny. And I, I find it funny that I think when AI came out, I think a lot of people thought it would take over technical stuff, but it's really a lot of the creative stuff. Like yeah. Coming up. Well, I guess it's technical, the script writing, and yeah. the copyright, copy stuff. But, mm-hmm. um, I definitely use, I'm using it the same thing for YouTube titles yeah. and just coming up with like, here's the title I have. Like, and I, um, it's actually attached for, to vidIQ. I don't know if you knew. Oh no, I use vidIQ. I don't know. That. They have an AI feature now wow. where you can just ask it a bunch of questions, but it answers all for YouTube. It's crazy. Wow. It's like, Hey, what are the trending? Like, what are the most trending things related to this? Cause this is what my YouTube video is about. Yeah. Uh, and they'll post like like what are the best keywords and like oh these are the top keywords for the month the year it's like whoa yeah <laughs> it helps me come wow. up with these I don't know that. I'm gonna have to use it yeah and then same thing I haven't done it for scripting my words in the videos that's gonna be interesting yeah but what I have used it for is to come up with the controversial um, questions related mm-hmm. to like real estate or anything yeah that's so, a good idea yeah so yeah, it's yeah. super powerful um, I use it for like like I said all that content stuff. There was uh, one of my clients, we, we had a YouTube video. It was about AI, actually. It's probably at 500,000 views right now on YouTube. But, uh, I mean, it's it's trending and all that stuff. But we used ChatGPT to help us come up with, like, the title and stuff. And then what we'll do as well is, like, not just for short form, but for, like, uh, YouTube for the hook. Like, we will script out, a, like, the first minute of the video. And even if we like it so much, we throw it onto ChatGPT, like, just to see what it would say. And then, like I said, just put something like, make it more me, make it, right. make it funnier or whatever it is, and, you know, just get a different edge on that. That's, it's so crazy, man. Yeah. Like, uh, I don't know what's going to happen, but I've definitely seen other creators from like wealthy investor, um, who have used AI, like the chat GPT, just come up with their video ideas and yeah. they've blown up like with fitness and other yeah. things. And I was like, wow, like I got to start utilizing this like yeah. a lot more. It's one of those things where it's like you either, you know, if your competition is going to use it and it's helping them, you either suck it up and not use it or, you know, start using it, <laughs> yeah. you know, it, it's definitely something new, but you know, change. Yeah. And it, it makes life easier. To be yeah, honest. it does. Yeah, it does. So for the people listening, where would they be able to find you if they wanted to help you? Like, how can they help you mm-hmm. and where can they find you like to contact? This is your chance to pitch. <laughs> uh, Instagram would probably be best. Okay. Uh, it's Ishmael.Marquez with two Z's and my name is spelled I-S-M-A-E-L dot m-a-r-q-u-e-z-z perfect perfect and then but is uh like are you still open to getting more clients or yeah yeah for sure yeah i've always just i've always been open like i said earlier like if i had a rush of people message me about getting clients or like needed uh help with social media in general whether it's with short form or just put put uh pointing them in the right direction just getting started whatever it is you know i'm here to help uh and if i can't take on the work I will refer you to someone I trust. Uh, I won't say yes to everything just for the sake of another client. Um, there's only so much time I have, so. I love it, man. Yeah. And uh, last thing too, if you had one message you just wanted to share, it doesn't have to be content, it doesn't have to be business, whatever. You just wanted to share it for the people out there, like your overarching message that you believe in. What's the message? I would say it's whatever you're thinking about doing, you should give it a try because the worst thing that happens is you fail and you stay in the same spot. I like that. I love that message. But if you guys want to reach out to Ismail, uh, his Instagram or social media links are going to be in the show notes below. Thank you so much for listening. Dude, appreciate you being on. Thank you for having me. Peace.